What is going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. This is my crypto mining solar trailer and today we're going to be updating the RS-485 port on my server rack batteries. As you guys know, I was able to update half of these because I only had one cable and apparently you need two. So this is the old cable, right? It's a little uh, USB by like Ethernet jack as you can see, right? And then we have the other one, which is exactly the same thing. One plugs into the computer USB style, and the other one plugs into the RS485 port right here, right? The other one, we were connected to the battery COM port and getting that half of the battery updated. So these batteries are actually two parts to update them. And as of right now, you guys know, the batteries are not actually reading properly. I have them set to lead acid because these were two different batches for batteries and we were having an issue with them communicating together so I have to update them all to the same exact firmware. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. Let's get this thing all hooked up and ready to go and then I'll explain the steps as we go. So it's going to be super hard to see. You can see there's only two wires going to this ethernet port for the cable that we actually needed for the RS-485 port. This one is for the battery COM port and you can see all of the cables inside this looks like a cat six right all uh, connected inside this ethernet port so there is a difference to these cables if you guys are looking to purchase this stuff from signature solar you will need these cables separately or to purchase these separately in case you ever need to do some firmware updates so it's good to know that because i didn't know there was two actual different cables um anyways let's get this all shut down so i'm just gonna kill i mean i don't have anything running right now off of uh the solar stuff because we've had a really shitty last couple days so it is what it is i'm just gonna kill this unit not like it's really needed anyways and then i'm just gonna go through and kill all of these batteries because that is the first step right you don't want to have anything going out you don't want to have anything connected really right as long as i kill this breaker the positive and negative are actually just null and void basically right then we're just going to kill all these batteries because they all don't need to be on we do have to change the dip switches. If you guys didn't see the last video, I walked you guys all through this. ID0 is actually ID64 in the book. So I'm going to put all of these switches over to the right side to get them all situated. And we got to disconnect all the battery communication cables as well. So I'm going to do all that. Let me get this cable hooked up to the computer and then we'll go through it step by step. So again, like the last video I did on the other half of the batteries, I will leave a link to this uh, firmware and this pamphlet everything in the Google Doc down in the pinned comment and in the description below. But first things first, you guys can see I got it plugged in here, USB. I got the Ethernet port plugged into the RS-485, and then I disconnected the battery comm, just have it hanging here, and the can that actually communicated with the uh, inverter 6000 XP. So that's all disconnected. Um, I do need to switch these switches all the way over to the right side. So that's that. As you can see, that is ID0 or ID64 in the book. Um, and then we should be good to turn it on, right? So now it says uh, connected to the RS-485 port in the battery. Good to go. All right, now all we got to do is open up the firmware, right? So I already have it kind of opened up right here. Let's go to the RS-485 updater. Sorry if it's a bit blurry. I'm going to go down and find the one that's the application. You can see it says application there. So that should be the updater. Open that, choose yes, let's see, and it's a whole bunch of Chinese, let's change it to English, so we can see what's going on, alright, let's go back to the pamphlet, just double check, okay, it says change it to English, got it, now what, uh, confirm that the COM port is set to the correct port number that the window is assigned, RS485 cable, also confirm that the baud rate is a uh, 115,200 okay so I guess we gotta check that at 115,200 and COM5 so we should be good I don't think it matters doesn't have to be the same um, okay now I, I guess we click open serial port let me just see what it says yep now click open serial port okay reset the BMS all right so it says please reset the BMS it will now appear so power off and then power back on. This box will automatically close whenever the BMS is reset. So this is where I was getting stuck last time, rather, with the uh, this cable, obviously, because it was wrong. So let's see what happens. Off, on, should come on. Oh, actually, it went away. 
What in the hell? All right, the battery doesn't come on. That's kind of weird. That threw me off a little bit. All right, so that please reset went away, which is new because it's never done that to me before. Now I click browse. We're going to find the file. Okay, found it. 485 updater, 485 firmware. And then we got to choose the bin file right there. All right, that should be good. Let me just double check, make sure it says bin on this one. It does. Yeah, it says dot bin. Okay, so that's perfect. That's all I needed to do there. And then we just hit send. All right, not too bad. It's going pretty quick, actually. Let's see. It says the transmission schedule will now begin filled to 100%. A box will appear saying file sent successfully. Okay. Uh, file sent successfully. Continue to burn. Um, I don't know what that means. It says click close. Close serial port. You have now successfully updated the Power Pro battery and you can now close the application. Okay, close serial port. Okay, it's back on. Okay, I'm gonna shut that off. Put it back to ID one off of ID zero. And I guess that's it. Let me run through all these and hopefully they register as lithium iron now. That'd be sweet. All right, I think we're all set. I'm gonna take these now and just kinda leave them down here in case I ever need to do any new firmware updates. I got all the cables back plugged in. I got all of the dip switches all situated, so I don't have to worry about none of that. As you can see, they're all back. They're not at ID zero. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's turn on all the batteries one at a time. Make sure they all come on. They're not soft bricked. Perfect. 100, 100. They're all on. They're all at 100. Hell yeah. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to flip all these on one at a time. I'm really hoping these things register fine now with the 6,000 XP. Man, this would be awesome. I've been waiting for this forever. All right, let me turn the switch on here. Turn the battery on here. I think that's it. Okay, so now to change the settings, I think I got to hold the enter button for three seconds. Okay, there we go. Now I got to go to setting three. Hit enter. See how it says type lead acid? We're going to change that to lithium ion um so right here you just hit the up down until you get to zero i believe that is the uh default for the eg4 battery so we're gonna try that hit enter it's gonna reset itself so now we just wait to see what happens hopefully we get a smiley face right here and everything works perfectly fine Fingers crossed. I don't know if it's gonna. And it still says warning. I gotta call the rep or have him get into my system and see what we have to do now. Now that I know the firmware is all 100% up to date, do I need to update this freaking 6000 XP? Man, I'm gonna have to find out. Give me a minute, let me get it situated and I'll be right back. All right, so I just spoke to the rep and he couldn't seem to get it to connect either. And then he asked me if I changed the, uh, the battery settings on this and I actually didn't after I flashed the firmware it must have changed my settings so I did go into this two seconds ago and just look and you can see it's at P06 VCT that's not what I need I need it to be on EG4 slash Lux and you have to have all of the switches over to the right side to be able to set this so we're gonna hit enter I'm gonna go back we're gonna shut this off I wanna turn it back on and then I'm going to get back into that setting. I want to make sure it held. And then I'm going to go through and do it to the same thing to all these batteries. Because, uh, yeah, they all need to read properly. And then it should communicate with that 6000 XP. So let me finish this up and we'll go from there. But you can see it's set to EG4 Lux now. All right, perfect. We should be cooking with gas now, boys. Let's do it. Turn the switch on. Turn the batteries on. Let's see. Oh, look at that. All the bars came into the box. That was actually a empty cell looking battery before. And that's it. Apparently there's no smiley face. It's just communicating properly because if I look at my app here, you can see it says batteries are hundred percent, which they are. I have the battery parallel number six it says 600 amp hours. So before that said nothing, it just said zero for parallel. And obviously I had it set to uh, lead acid. So hell yeah, let's get some mining equipment back on in this trailer. 
and get things making money. Hell yeah. All right, we got this. This PDU coming online now. Everything's been off for days, like I said, because it's been really shitty out. But now the batteries are completely full. I'll be able to run a bunch of stuff during the day. I'm not going to focus on running things overnight unless I only keep like one or two of the box miners on. Probably the AL boxes I'll keep on. Everything else I'll shut off. It just, it can't really handle 2,000 watts overnight for more than one night. It can handle it once as long as it's really sunny the next day, but yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna push the limits today, but either way, oh, there we go. Actually, smiley face is on and the power is going out. The AL Box 2 Plus and the AL Box 2 Original are both firing up right now. I'm gonna get the Caspa miners on, I think, as well, because, again, it's full batteries and it's, it's kind of sunny out, actually. When the clouds are covering the sky like this you actually get a shit ton of sunlight even if the sun's going down because it kind of radiates through the clouds it's kind of neat uh but anyways yeah let me get these ks zeros on and go from there you guys i appreciate you hanging out with me sorry this is kind of a short video i gotta do some revamping in here i do want to get some wood cut for the top of these and i also gotta get the other unit right here situated. I need to get this parallel connected to this. I actually have to run a second cable from here down to the other unit and then I need to steal the string from this old uh, inverter setup that I have here and just kind of put it in there for the time being until I order a whole new set of panels. You guys have a great day. I appreciate you for hanging out. I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.